Hello, this is astrologynewsreport.com with your hosts, David Anton Savage and Ron Berger. Now we go to our third segment of this week's report, People in the News, where we will analyze the Vedic astrology birth chart of a newsworthy person, place, or event. This week we've decided to analyze the birth chart of President Barack Obama, focusing in on what is going on for him now and in the immediate future. The Prez has been in some hot water lately due to his declaration of unilateral action, meaning his use of executive orders as his only alternative for getting something, anything, done since the stonewalling Republican Congress critters won't pass any laws. So we thought it's time to take a look at what's going on in his astrology chart to gain some insights on the current and future disposition of his presidency. There's not a whole lot of time left in the Oval Office for President Obama. Before we dive in here with predictions, let's just give our viewers a quick rundown of Obama's birth chart in case you are not familiar with it. And you can find a more complete analysis on my website, livingskillfully.com. First things first. The rising sign is Capricorn and is strong with its ruler Saturn in the first house, conjunct Jupiter, the planet of wisdom and generosity. Capricorn is a sign that is all about practical results and although opinionated, prefers to back out of quarrels. Being ruled by Saturn, Capricorn gets to the goal slowly, eventually. With Saturn in the first house, this quality is enhanced quite a bit. This probably explains why so many are frustrated with his style. This is the source of No Drama Obama. Note too that Venus, the planet of compromise and agreement, is in the sixth house of enemies. As such, Mr. Obama prefers to negotiate with his enemies rather than subdue them. But this does not fit with Cowboy America's attitude towards the opponent. No middle ground. The country prefers a winner-takes-all approach. More insight into Mr. Obama's nature is gleaned from his rising nakshatra, which is Danishta. This nakshatra is symbolized by Shiva's drum, or Krishna's flute. In other words, being an instrument of God. Danishta people always exhibit good conduct. Danishta is willing to wait until everyone else has spoken before pronouncing his own judgment. Unfortunately, the president is unaware of Vedic astrology. If he was, he would know that the USA has four planets in Gemini. This country exemplifies the Gemini quality of multiple points of view, which means that the wait time on letting everyone have their say is pretty much infinite. Note another important item. He has his natal son, the planet of power and authority, in the seventh house of relationship. This indicates that he has to make a relationship with power. This also gives him a powerful wife. Currently, Mr. Obama is in his Saturn major period, which began in 2012, just before the last election. All of his Capricorn Saturnian qualities are on full display, and so we get to see him in full magnification mode of his basic energy pattern. The only problem is he is president at a time during which a lot of pots are on the boil at home and abroad. We could say a lot more, but now let's jump into the present situation which is well illustrated by the current positions of the transiting planets. The first thing to address is a rather intense crisscross at the top of this chart this month. Mars and Rahu are doing a switcheroo right on the cusp of the ninth and 10th houses. The ninth house of destiny and belief, which is getting a boost from action-oriented Mars, will soon be replaced by ambitious Rahu, while the 10th house of career and public actions is going to get juiced by aggressive Mars. And even though they are both considered natural malefics, they are certainly not all bad. In fact, both Mars and Rahu are strongly motivational forces. 
an astrological kick in the pants, if you will, one would hope that, by this time, Mr. Obama has realized that his reserved, held-back style of leading is not really working so well. Well, Ron, as we have been talking about, a Rahu transit helps bring focus. Obama will be considering his place in presidential history as his final term is winding down now. Rahu in the ninth house of the future is right on time for contemplating such things. And then, at the same time, Mars in his tenth house ought to help him get some gumption to kick ass and take names. It is worth noting that Ketu is going into Obama's third house of self-efforts and the skill set. So on the one hand, it looks like Ketu's subtractive energy will undermine him. But on the other hand, K2 brings with it renunciation and change, which will compel Obama to dump out the old toolbox and cultivate new techniques for working with the current reality. Moving on to another area of his chart, we now have Jupiter exalted in Cancer, transiting in Obama's seventh house, and therefore aspecting his first house. Despite all the problems, president is benefiting from optimistic Jupiter's energy, giving him renewed hope and confidence, and in another really big change that will run completely through the rest of his presidency, Saturn moves into Scorpio, his 11th house, this coming November. What can you say about that, Ron? Well, Saturn, the planet of focus and persistence, will be transiting in the power sign Scorpio. This energy package is strong for focused efforts, but the downside is an ends-justifies-the-means approach to dealing with problems, which can lead to ruthlessness, even underhanded methods, to achieve the goal. And here we are talking about his 11th house of goals and ambitions. So are you saying it will make him more determined or willing to do whatever it takes? Maybe that's an improvement? No more no drama Obama? Well, yes, and let's remember that Saturn is the ruler of his chart, and he is in his Saturn major period. Saturn narrows the focus. Saturn puts the nose to the grindstone. Saturn hangs in there and gets the job accomplished. Saturn is also the planet of experienced, established people transiting in the 11th house of friends. So Obama can rely on those whom he has had a long-standing relationship with. By the way, his vice president, Joe Biden, is Scorpio rising. Okay, so to sum up, Jupiter transiting his 7th house, aspecting his ascendant, gives the president renewed confidence and optimism. Saturn transiting in his 11th house, will give him more determination for accomplishing his goals, and Rahu in his ninth house will keep him focused on his beliefs and his agenda for the future. But what about Mars? That's the planet of action as well as conflict. Yes, well, as we noted at the outset, Mars is now going to transit through Obama's tenth house from July 13th to September 4th, and here it joins with Saturn already there in his tenth. A lot of energy for using presidential powers. You can bet there will be more executive orders coming. Also, both Mars and Saturn are natural malefics, together in the tenth house of conduct in society. And quite likely, he will do things that will be perceived as unpopular. Okay, well, after that, Mars will go into its own sign, Scorpio, his 11th house of goals, ambitions, and associations. That will be really a strong position from September 4th to October 18th. He'll be super ambitious, running around and campaigning for fellow Democrats in the lead-up to the November elections. And then Mars proceeds into Sagittarius, Obama's 12th house, where it will be from October 18th until November 26th. Mars transiting in the 12th house can be nasty. The ancient texts call it attack from a hidden enemy. Let me guess, who might that be? A 
a last minute smear campaign by the Koch brothers, Carl Rove, Dick Cheney. Yes, David, that sounds like a likely scenario. But really, other than the craziness of the upcoming midterm elections, let's consider the longer range planetary positions. Do you think he'll accomplish something in the next two years? Or will we all have to endure two years of a lame duck presidency? Certainly, Mr. Obama will be making efforts, as his chart analysis shows. But we also have to remember that, like all of us, he functions within a context. The predictions for his own chart, even though really important, he is the President of the United States after all, do not take into account circumstantial karma. Yes, so true. Presidents are not gods. They are subject to larger forces, as are we all. In any case, we will be checking back in with the President's astrology chart again and again as events unfold. Thanks for joining us on astrologynewsreport.com, and be sure to follow us on Twitter at Astro News Report.